April 15th is a special day as we celebrate Jackie Robinson shattering the color barrier in Major League Baseball and setting the stage for momentous change in society. In Robinson's words, a life is not important except in the life that it impacts of other lives. Today, his son shares a powerful story of the life of Jackie and how it epitomizes an enduring legacy, part of black history always. On a personal level, my father wanted to build a strong family and be a strong father. He grew up in a house without a father. He wanted to be someone who could support his mother, who grew up as a sharecropper, and his grandmother, who was born a slave. He was a man of few words, but a man of action, responsibility. And he did not give a long lecture about responsibility. But when it was my turn to cut the grass, for example, Saturday morning, supposed to be out early cutting the grass, if, and, and I have on a few occasions been caught laying in bed, and I'd hear the lawnmower start. And I'd look out the window and I'd see my father cutting the grass that I was supposed to cut. So he didn't have to give me a lecture about responsibility and, and shirking responsibility. He went out and said, you know, that there's a job that needs to be done and you can either take that responsibility and do it or somebody might have to do it for you. And it's, it's to your greater shame if it's your own father. As Major League Baseball celebrates Jackie Robinson Day, we are pleased to be joined by baseball analyst Doug Glanville. And Doug, we know that Jackie Robinson, he broke the color barrier in Major League Baseball in 1947. His impact fell all around the world. He traveled with the Brooklyn Dodgers to Japan in 1956 for an exhibition tour. What was the significance of that trip? Well, you know, you think about 1956, this is at the end of his career. And you see it as a moment of ambassadorship. This is a diplomacy, a, a work of diplomacy. Uh, after the war, World War II, the bombing in Japan, there's healing that needs to be done. And Jackie Robinson was such a centerpiece of peace, bringing people together, and equality. And so he goes on this tour. This is four weeks long. They're all exhausted from the season. And he is one of the most famous people in the, in the country at that moment. 12,000 fans come out, and Jackie Robinson is the most notable one. And you see the bridge that were built. He was expected to talk to diplomats and ambassadors. I mean, it was more than just the game, and they recognized him as a real example of how you can bridge differences in countries. So a lot of the Japanese players we see today who are Shohei Otani, these great players, uh, they come from this legacy where Jackie Robinson sort of opened those doors. And so 1964, the first Japanese player breaks in in Masanori Murakami. And when he broke in, as, AKA Mashi, mm. uh, he started something during the civil rights movement in 1964. So that opened the doors really for J Japan and the United States to be partners. Now you traveled to Cuba in 2016 as a part of the ESPN crew broadcasting an exhibition game between the Rays and the Cuban national team. You spoke to Jackie's wife, Rachel. What did you learn about Jackie and his connection to Cuba? I mean, wow. I mean, first of all, I mean, 1947 was the year he broke in. And one thing I didn't know initially is that they had spring training, the Dodgers, in Havana, Cuba. Mm. There was a lot of problems in 1946 in Florida with racial tensions. Uh, so they ended up in Cuba. And the thing about Jackie Robinson being there, they felt very welcomed and they started to see the, the possibility internationally. And then it became clear that the color line was not just a domestic color line and a United States question. This was a question across the globe, and they were watching how America would handle equality through Jackie Robinson. So he became this example of color and race and getting the opportunity and equality. So whether the Cubans, who, by the way, had, at that point are very diverse on their teams in terms of color, and the Panamanians, who also were part of the exhibition <coughs> game, uh, he was a big part of setting that example. And so Panama, Cuba, these, all these nations were part of this international impact that Jackie Robinson had. And let's bring it to present day. Over 39% of players on rosters on opening day came from diverse backgrounds. In what ways are you seeing Jackie Robinson's legacy having a ripple effect on the MLB today? Well, I see it as pioneers inspire pioneers. And you look at this list of all these countries represented. One example I think of is not on here, Jan Gomes, for example, from Brazil, the first Brazilian. So you still have these first, but all those countries have stories 
of people who broke these barriers and broken and where baseball was the diplomat. Baseball became the conduit by which these countries and nations could come together. And then that peacemaking effort, the inspiration flows through Jackie Robinson, one of the more significant examples of breaking barriers and coming and really elevating what our country could be about. And he held it more than just on the field, off the field. He held that standard and that expectation. And all these other nations have this uh, participation by through the first. And, and Jackie Robinson really paved the way of what it means to be first and do it with grace. We often think about the color barrier as being something domestic, but it definitely had a global impact.